Hello everyone again, Texty21 here, and welcome to the seventh video in this series of Samsung Genius Slide slash Corby Pro slash Brooklyn feature, reviews, tutorials, whatever you want to call them. This is now the seventh video, I'm surprised I have made this many, but there's still more to show, believe it or not, and in this video I'll be showing a couple more features and answering uh, major questions from all the other videos. The main one concerning Java games, which I mentioned in part two, but there's still a bit more I can cover, so I'll go through that. But anyway, in this video I'll be covering uh, the keyboard in a bit more detail, in the sense of I've had this phone for four months now, and one main question was, you know, does the keyboard act up after a while, do the keys start getting a bit soft, so I'll go through that. I'm going to show you the internet browser, give you a quick tour of that. I'll be showing you how you put files on the phone, and if you've had problems putting files on the phone, there is something you can change on here in the settings, which may make it a bit easier. And finally, I'm going to be showing you about the arrow panel in Java games. So when you install a game, I'll show you how to do that as well. You know, from a Java file like these, for example, when you put these on the phone, in some cases there'll be an arrow panel at the bottom of the screen that gets in the way, it might not be needed, and so on. So in games which are touchscreen enabled, you may want to get rid of that arrow panel, and I'll show you how. With a step-by-step -step guide. How to do that, you're going to need the jar files and an archiving program, which I'll explain later. So, until then, for the seventh time, let's begin. So the first thing I'll cover is the keyboard usage. Basically this keyboard has got better with age I think. The keys are not loose. This is yeah, this is not loose. So as you can see, you build up a bit of speed the more you go along. The keys um, have got like a sort of not a rubbery feel to them, but they're not glossy. Um but I'm not sure if you can see that. But yeah, that does get a bit mucky, so you do have to clean the keys. I just use screen, like stuff used to clean the screens. I use that on the keys to clean them because my hands maybe get a bit greasy if I've just been eating or something like that. And as you can see, you know, you build up speed using your thumbs, and the keys are very well sized for your thumbs. And it's just a case you get. Oh, if I can spell get used to it after a while. So basically, status report, the keyboard gets better with age and just don't mash it. And it is a case of you will be build up speed as you go along and you just, it's like muscle memory, like for example the exclamation mark. You have to press alt down here and exclamation and maybe for the smiley face you have to go alt uh, colon and then capital letter D. You get used to it. However, if typing your message is not the way forward, you can always write out a message using the writing boxes. In these, you write out letters and symbols and numbers to write out your message. So say, like that. Simple as that. You can use your finger, just remember it's the first point of your finger, well that's just the pressure, therefore, you know, so it won't be as thick as your finger, so it's just a line there. And it's a simple little thing to use, it's great fun if you haven't used it before, and you get different options, right boxes are here, you can just write out things, however, in this case, it's on letters, so if I write a question mark, it comes out as a J dot, I have to change this to symbols, before it recognises that's a question mark. So, if you haven't tried it yet, try the handwriting app, it's a good bit of fun, and it's basically there if you don't want to type or write. The next thing I'll show is the internet browser. This is the internet browser, except I've left on blank, left it on blank. Basically, general tour to web browser, you have your backwards and forwards buttons. You have a refresh, and when a page is loading, that turns into a stop. You've got a full screen option, so I'm going to hide that, like that, and then you can press this button down here, bring them back. And then at the bottom here, you've got add to bookmarks, your bookmarks, options, and exit. So if you have a look at bookmarks, there we are. Depending on your network, it depends what preloaded ones are there, but of course you can get rid of them, you can rename them. And here at the bottom, as you can see, I put the three um, basically main ones I use. There's Google, even though there is an app for Google, and there's an app for YouTube and Facebook. 
basically that's just Google, that's m.youtube.com and at m.facebook.com. So if you don't have any of these widgets, it's a simple case. I'll go to your bookmarks, go add, type in URL, so say m.facebook.com, give it a name and save. So if you don't have the YouTube out, which I understand a lot of people don't have for some reason, just simple case, go to your bookmarks, click, and it loads, there we are. So today we have stair jump fail from fail blog and somewhat something from belly political. But anyway, I'll be showing you more of the YouTube and Facebook apps in my eighth video. So if you want to find out more about how this all works, I'll show you at another time. Now, if you want to put your own files onto the phone, which understandably is a good idea, there are many ways to do this. You can use a supplied USB cable, which is in that blue bag, which I think I showed in vid 5 or 6. You plug it in to this panel on the side, plug it into your computer, and use it like a memory stick, a storage device. You can also take out the memory card, which is underneath the cover, and put it on there, put it on via a card reader. You can take things via Bluetooth, you can download things via Wi-Fi, etc, etc. However, I understand some people have been having problems with getting files on the phone if they get to their PC. There, there is a possible solution if you haven't tried this yet. Basically, if you go to Menu, Settings, you go to Phone Settings, go down to PC Connections, you have three options there. By default, I found the phone on Media Player. This may be part of the problem. Basically, if your if your phone's not talking to your computer, you could say, when you plug it in via USB, try changing the option to mass storage. This then means the computer will see it like a memory stick and it'll only see its memory. Click save. So hopefully that should um, help people having problems connected via USB. If that still doesn't work, then there's something wrong somewhere. I'm afraid I can't really help because everyone's PC is different. The first thing I'll talk about is how you install them on the phone. You put them onto your phone, either USB or memory card or Bluetooth or whatever you want to do. If you have the jar files with you, they'll go into my files and usually they'll go into something like other files, but not always. And here are three jar files. Basically, you go to your jar file, which you just put on the phone, say this one here, you click it, you go install, yes. It will usually say content not signed, so make sure it's something you trust. Continue. It'll tell you all different details here and stuff. Install. It's installed. So you could play if you want to play it now or go back if you want to go back. And that's it. The game is installed. It really is as simple as that. Um, I will point out though, if you don't um, put it on your phone as a jar file, if you download it from the internet directly or if you go to Gameloft's website or something, the game will go straight into your Games and More folder. So that's one I just installed. It'll go straight in here and you won't have the jar file. This game doesn't support touchscreen, so it comes up with this, the arrow panel. However, there are some games which will present you with a touchscreen interface, so here this doesn't work. So you don't need this arrow panel, however, there's no way to get rid of it. Uh, there is. So in this case, as it's not touchscreen, yeah, you have to use the arrows. However, if I'm in some games, this blocks the bottom, so I can't play some of the games where, for example, the floor may be part fire or something. So, how do you get rid of this arrow panel? Let me show you. You're going to start off with your jar files here. So this is the one I just installed. But they'll look like this, and hopefully you should have jar on your machine, but it doesn't really matter. Basically, these are jar files. They're archives. So you're going to need an archiving program, like the one I use in this example is 7-Zip. So, in this case, you need to open the archive. You do this by right-clicking on your file, in this case 7-Zip, and you open archive. So this depends on the program you use, of course, uh, but basically you need to open up the jar file. Here's the thing, do not, I repeat, do not go down here, go open with Notepad. If you open the jar file in Notepad, it will corrupt it if you edit it. So make sure you open it, because you're not editing that, you're editing something inside. So when you open the archive, you'll end up with a list of files. You're looking for this one. You're looking for a folder called meta-inf. And inside that folder, you're looking for manifest.mf. This is the big file which you need to edit. So what you do now is you go to manifest, you right-click it, and go edit, or open in notepad. 
When you open Manifest in Notepad, you might get something like this. So you'll get things like the name of it, where it's by, created by, etc, etc, etc. In here, you need to put a special code at the bottom here, which looks something a bit like this. You need to put that in directly, character for character, capital letter for capital letter, into this notepad file. This basically gets rid of the arrow panel, and it also rotates the screen if you open the keyboard, um, which some games it may work, most of them it doesn't, so it's a bit of hit and miss with that one. But you put this in letter for letter, there's no spaces except for after each of these colons. So if you want to take this down, uh, pause the video because I'm going to move it on. But basically you put that in, so your manifest file will now look something like this. Exactly the same, so you've got this at the bottom. You then save that and close it. In the case of 7-zip, it will then say this message. The file manifest was modified, do you want to update it? Click OK. If you click cancel, you basically undo your changes. You'll then end up, after all that, with an edited jar file, and that number may be a bit different, it depends. You then put this edited Java file onto the phone. So then when you play it, so if you find one that I have edited, if we say, for example, Top Gear, there we go. It's running perfectly on its own, and there's no arrow panel, which means we can see stuff at the bottom. So I hope that process was clear. Um, if you have any questions about that, please let me know. And um, I just hope that helps some people with their problems. So thank you for watching. I've covered quite a lot now. It's about what, 70 minutes or so of things on the phone. Um, I'm glad it's useful to some of you and I'm glad you enjoy watching this. Uh, just like to say a quick hi to all my new subscribers. Thank you for subscribing. I really do appreciate it. Hope I can live up to your expectations. Yeah, basically my eighth video, which I'm doing fairly soon after this, I'll be covering YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Pal Ringo, and more. So that's more of a social tutorial sort of video. And I'll do that as soon as I can after I finish this dastardly college maths homework. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. I'll see you later. Goodbye.